so good morning everybody Gemma from little zoo to you how is everybody this morning I do hope everybody is okay now we've had quite an exciting week this week we've met some pretty amazing animals that live in good morning Oliver that live in some pretty amazing places now this morning we're gonna look at some animals and what I want you to do is I've got a bit of a task for you now I want you to think about where your ideal habitat would be where you would like to live so if we think about animals that live in the snow I think I'd be an animal that lives in the snow now we think of animals that live in the snow like polar bears if you want to be a polar bear you'd live you know obviously where the snow is well that's a completely different subject but morning Tom so if you were wanted to live if you were as an animal that wanted to live um, where the snow was you my first thought would be a polar bear now to live somewhere where it's cold you'd need a nice thick coat so adaptation comes in what about what about if you were an animal where would you live where would you personally live so comments below let me know if you could live in any habitat where it would be where would it be so comment below let me know let me know if you was an animal where would your ideal where would your ideal habitat be good morning vivian a cave that's a good one so Oliver what I want you to do is I want you to think about I want you to think about if you was an animal lived in a cave how would you be able to survive there what would you eat would you need to be kept warm would you need to be kept cold how how would you adapt how would you need to help yourself survive basically how would you how would you survive in that habitat now what I want you to think about is animals that live in caves so animal that lives in a cave my first thought is a bat okay would you need to fly would you need to fly you know think about how these adaptations would help you now Aaron says he would like to live underground because he wants to be an ed he would want to be an hedgehog so thinking of the hedgehog Aaron why would you need prickles on your back if you're living underground? Why would you need prickles on your back? Why has the hedgehog got those prickles? So Oliver's now changing. He would be a bear. Oh, bears could live in caves. He would be a bear. Right, guys. So what I want you to do is, while you're thinking of all these ideas of if you were an animal and where you would live, what I want you to do is I want you to get one of the back recycle your your worksheets but what I want you to do is on the back of one of your worksheets I want you to design me a mythical creature that would live in your ideal habitat so Oliver what I want you to do is I want you to draw your bear I want you to put little little pictures of what your bear would eat draw a little cave in the background Aaron fantastic for defense that's a good one. It's a good one for defence. So what I want you to do is get an A4 feet piece of paper, Aaron, and and draw and draw on your on your picture um, the the hedgehog and maybe do some tunnels. Um, but draw the spikes on his back and label that for defence. Um, show me the food he would eat. So if he's living underground, what food would he find underground? So that's my first task. Okay. Now on to the worksheets so we're on to our worksheet of of writing down what kind of animals you would find living in a hot on a hot tropical island and what creatures would live in the sea so with your mythical creature in mind when you're labeling when you're putting down what creatures would live in these habitats i want you to think about how they survive there so if we put for instance what creature lives in the sea a shark how does a shark manage to survive in the sea so think i want i want i want brains ticking today okay 
we'll come we'll come back to that worksheet so i've got you a few animals to have a look at because we're going to look at how they have adapted to living in their habitats but also looking at animals that have evolved from these animals and we'll go well done oliver it has gills to breathe yeah so that's how he would survive in the sea so oliver if you write that down on your worksheet i know you've got worksheets if you put that down on your worksheet we'll work we'll work through a couple of these cool pretty amazing animals not just cool amazing animals so let's get started now do bear with me because i've got i'm i'm like superwoman remember i do this this is just me i don't have somebody well unless my boys are here then they can pass me the animals but i don't today so do bear with me i've got a couple in in uh some tubs here but then i'll have to go and get the others so let's think of an animal that lives in a habitat let's think of the rainforest now to survive in the rainforest you've got to be pretty you've got to come up with some pretty amazing ways to survive so when we think of the rainforest you think of big animals big bigger than that bigger big animals so how can you defend yourself against those animals to start with what food are you going to eat so let's have a look at one of the pretty amazing animals that does survive in the rainforest and this we've met her before and did anyone see the riddle this morning has anyone guessed the riddle now this is millie millie or miller depending where you're from miller if you're from yorkshire so this is millie have a look so bearing in mind millie is a giant african millipede so she's giant she's a giant species of millipede and she comes from africa now where she lives in africa there is a lot of bigger animals so surely she must have one way or another to survive so let's have a think of how she protects herself first so she's got a nice hard exoskeleton okay that exoskeleton protects her body it protects her internal organs so she can survive now morning lynn now aaron said he would be an hedgehog so he could, so he could live underground now millie is an animal that lives underground and we know that because she hasn't got any eyes okay no eyes generally if an animal doesn't have eyes or poor eyesight that would mean uh, they would live in a dark habitat so millie the millipede lives in an area which she doesn't need to use any eyes too too dark underground she don't need them yes fantastic aaron yes and can you remember aaron can you remember what millie would eat can you remember what we said Millie would eat? So we're thinking about how she survives in the rainforest. So in her habitat, how would she survive? Now, she is from a group of animals called arthropods. So she's got jointed legs, lots of jointed legs. But not only has she got her exoskeleton, her hard body to survive to help protect her she can also secrete a fluid from between her joints in her body so i don't know if you can remember <coughs> excuse me very dry in here today <coughs> so i don't know if you can remember me saying through the secretion of this fluid it can turn your finger 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 it can turn your finger um, yellow to start with so if you touch her and she's she's worried she will secrete this yellow fluid a bit like do you remember me saying about the ladybird if a lady if you hold a ladybird and it and it kind of everyone used to think it will ladybird wee if it wees on you it's not actually we it's it's actually there to protect herself because what it does is it it almost acts as a deterrent so 
if you were to lick it, which I would never suggest you do, uh, it would taste quite sour. It wouldn't be very nice. But what an amazing way to, to protect yourself. And that is what Millie would do. She'd secrete this fluid that would help protect her from other animals. So from animals, from eating her. So you can see she's quite, quite a long body. She would curl herself up and actually literally literally hide those legs so birds can't come so i've got an itch uh, birds can't come and and pick her up from using those legs so they are a deterrent and if the bird was to then pick her up by her body she would secrete this yellow fluid once it's on your hand it's yeah it's really gross so she's very good at at protecting herself but do you think we can do better do you think we can come up with another animal that maybe is an animal that can survive better in the rainforest now remember remember what i said yesterday about habitat to have a healthy habitat everything has to work together okay for a habitat to work everything needs to flow and work together so Millie's quite a good worker. Remember, she's an animal that will eat a lot of rotting vegetation, um, but not just eat the rotting vegetation. She would actually, once she has a poo, and she poos at that rotting vegetation, there's a lot, there is a lot of, of food for the plants in her, her waste. So that's a good thing. That is a good thing coming from Millie. So she helps, she's pretty good. She can um survive all around she's quite quite an amazing creature for the rainforest so spoke about how miller would survive in the rainforest what about an animal that can survive in the rainforest let me know. didn't get my all important cloth out so what about an animal that not only lives in the rainforest, but an animal that can survive by hiding itself. <laughs> so this is Michelle, and Michelle is a giant snail. Now, really, first thought is, well, if you're looking at Michelle, is wow, look at the size of her. But to be an animal that survives um, with a soft body, no no skeleton at all, the only thing she has actually got to protect herself is her shell. Now, the good thing about me, shell... Yes, Aaron, yes. They can survive quite a long time underwater, actually. So, with me, shell, she protects herself with her shell. Now, we think of how different species of snail survive in different habitats. So Michelle is a giant African land snail. So we know just from her name, she's a giant species of snail all the way from Africa and she lives on land. But we do get sea snails as well. Total different habitat, okay? But Michelle, <laughs> she's like that, oh, she's at it again. But Michelle, is an animal that can survive she lives in the rainforest can you imagine what she has to put up with what predators she would have in the rainforest does anyone want to have a guess what sort of predators michelle would have to protect herself from in the rainforest yes aaron yes they can love so what sort of predators would Michelle have to have to not fight off but have to protect herself from in the wild so she comes from the rainforest what sort of animals have a guess have a guess what sort of animals Michelle has to protect herself from so we think about the rainforest oh I think of like monkeys I think of bird, lots of birds, lots of different birds. Then I think of frogs, I think of lizards. 
so it's a very diverse kind of habitat is the rainforest but ideal for our giant african land snails because it's very humid it's a bit like it's a bit like my animal room today it's definitely very humid in here today it starts off quite dry when we first come in then <clears throat> gets quite warm <laughs> Tigers. Well done, Aaron. Yeah, you might come across a tiger. Do you think a tiger would like to eat a snail? I think a tiger would eat a snail. I mean, she is quite a big snail. Just, let me see. So she's quite big. So she would be quite a hefty meal for an animal. <clears throat> but remember, I know she's a snail, but she can move quite quickly when she wants she can she can retract her eyes she can retract her body to hide inside her shell so thinking about our creatures <clears throat> that we are going to design mythical creatures would you be a, a, a creature that has a shell on your back would it be would it be a shell would you would you want a shell on your back <laughs> no but yeah it's still a snail rachel it's still a snail so rachel's saying thrushes love eating snails in our garden so not that they're in the rainforest but it's still it's still our habitat will will work by having those snails there the thrush can thrive so it's all about how a habitat works together so it's exactly the same exactly the same um and in the rainforest again um the birds, same as your thrushes, if you watch the behaviour of thrushes, when they pick snails up, sometimes they will actually drop them on the ground. And it's literally, they've learned that if they drop them, it might have been just one dropped accidentally and then they, they actually learn that behaviour, that this snail, obviously you break in the snail shell to let the, let the insides come out. So it's all learnt behaviour, it's how a habitat works together. A French Menlin, yeah, French, yeah. Um, Escargo, is it Escargo? I think it's Escargo, is that the name of them, Escargo? Yeah, not for me. Actually, it's probably one of the most popular questions with Michelle is I get asked, especially nursing homes, you always get the cheeky old men saying, oh, she tastes nice with garlic butter. But honestly, I mean, I don't know what snails taste like anyway, but um, I, I, all, all I imagine is if they were cut, literally it'd be like leather i just can't it just not yeah anyway so would your mythical creature have a shell would it be a soft-bodied animal with a shell yeah cheers for that input lynn lynn's saying yes they're very tasty but i'm sure i'm sure they are small snails not big leathery snails so would your mythical creature have a big hard shell on their back to protect them so have a think, have a think about how we are protecting ourselves in our habitat. And as Rachel said, the shell, you know, it can be broken. OK, so think of other ways that you can protect yourself. Like Millie the millipede, she can, she can secrete that, that poison, that poison, that fluid, which tastes pretty gross. So I want you to think about how they are going to survive in their habitat. <clears throat> now, we looked at the rainforest habitat, a few animals from the rainforest. Let's now look at an animal that can't survive. Yes, Oliver. Yes, a crab can breathe underwater. So, let's now have a look at an animal that can survive. That can survive heat. So, let's have a look. Preferably, oh, preferably, without going to the toilet on me. So Aaron's saying his mythical creature won't have a shell. So make sure you, you draw in your creature, Aaron, and put in, but like you said, you wanted to live underground. So does it have eyes? Does it have eyes? Does it have eyes to live underground? Does it need eyes? Will that be a waste of energy? Okay. So an animal now that lives, that lives in the desert. 
So we've got a question on our worksheet. And one of the questions is, um, what kind of creature would you find in a hot tropical island? Now, I suppose, can we call Australia a hot tropical island? Definitely. Yeah. I, mm, I'm i not a sun seeker, so I wouldn't do very well living. Gosh, I, I struggle to sit in an ear. But although it's nice to have a little bit of sun, it's, yeah, it's not for me. It's definitely not for me. But would you live somewhere where it's sunny? I mean, Australia sounds nice, doesn't it? But then you've got to think about the habitats that are there and the animals that are there. They have big, hairy, I mean, not just not just scary spiders. They have spiders that kill you, you know? You've got to think about how would you survive? So looking at an animal that comes from Australia, this is Lego. For anyone who's ever met me and Lego before, you will know a bit of a story about Lego. She doesn't have any back feet. Oh, sorry. She is, she had a bit of shed left on her spikies. So she doesn't have any back feet. That's a whole different story. And that's why we called her Lego, for, short for Legolas. But it's not to do with how much she drinks. It's definitely to do with <laughs> under. Um, it's to do with obviously not having no back feet. Oliver, yes, crabs can breathe underwater, my love. So, thinking of an animal that lives in the desert areas, we, in general, just by looking at Lego, we can see she's very, she's very quite light in colour. Now, that would be ideal. Why, what, what would help? What, being, being, being this colour, how will that help her in the wild? How does the colour of an animal help her in the wild? You've got sand in your ear. So how would the colouring of an animal help them in the wild? Fantastic! Well done, Aaron. Camouflage. So if you're an animal that's bright green and lives in the desert, it's you'd 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 find it quite hard to to camouflage, wouldn't you? If you look, if you look at my wallpaper in the background, um, I've got an animal that lives actually against that, and that's Rango. I don't know if it's in there somewhere, but literally, sometimes I can walk, and it takes me a good couple of minutes to find him because he's so good at camouflaging. And that is the same with um, a bearded dragon in Australia. Talking of Australia, um, morning, Lynns. Um, being an animal that lives in Australia, she wouldn't find any issue with camouflaging in the sands. So you can see beautiful colouring. But they can go quite light as well. But then how would she protect herself? So we know she's a reptile. She's a reptile. She's got scales. So she needs the the warm environment of Australia to, to keep her body working but then how would she survive in that habitat so so how would she protect herself first we said camouflage is a good one that is that is a really good one but how else if we look at her have a look at her she's got some pretty cool spikes on her body can you see <laughs> although i should say Twice now I've had the the bearded dragons out and twice they've actually gone to the toilet on there. Which is gross because it stinks. But can you see? Now I'll tell you a little bit about Lego and her name. So she's a bearded dragon. Surely she can't be a real dragon. No, she's not. So what she is, she's a lizard 
that uses her beard, literally, to scare other animals away. Now, what she will do is, she will, not like the frog, but she will literally puff her beard up, really, really dark, really dark, it'll go literally black to, to, it's a warning, that's a warning, that's telling another animal to basically leave her alone. Go away, leave her alone. So that's one way she protects herself. <laughs> Lady Muck. So that's one way she protects herself, that beard. That beard, she'll puff it up. If you, if it's a male bearded dragon, they can get quite big as well. C quite intimidating, really. But also what they would do is, they can actually literally puff their bodies, a bit like a pancake. And when they puff their bodies, all these spikes on her body literally make her look a bit like a cactus. And if, like I say, quite intimidating. But for anyone who has had a feel of Lego, you will know that there is... Sorry, she's got little bits of shed still on her end of her spikies. So there is a few of her spikes like the ones that are quite solid, they're quite spiky. But then her body spikes, actually, they do actually feel quite soft. But, obviously always making sure you go with her where the scales go to not make her feel uncomfortable. But she's... That is a fantastic way to protect yourself. Show another animal how big and spike you are because can you imagine being in the desert you're going to look at an animal and saying oh yeah i love that for dinner but then look at it and think oh it might get stuck in my throat so very very good way of protecting yourself you're not going to want to be eaten by animals so one way no matter what habitat you live in one way to protect yourself is to make an animal think it's going to work it's going to work <laughs> crazy animals so we've spoke how long can they get uh aaron lego's quite short actually she's got stunted growth when she came to me as a rescue she were quite poorly but as in length wise they can get quite big surprisingly quite big i'd say twice the size of lego not not as big as anything compared to a iguana or anything like that but yeah she is a smaller um a smaller bit of a dragon as well i love it can you see a turn of red i can't see what you can see on here the little stumps the little stump. what she likes actually she likes going in the bath she does like going in the bath but Remember, we're thinking about the habitat where she would live and how well they they would survive. Actually, that's a really good question, Oliver, because they can literally, they can survive quite a long time. If I remember rightly, my cousin had one. I think they were about 12. So you're talking, they are a big commitment, a long, a long commitment. So, popping Lego back. So we spoke about camouflage. We spoke about how how they would survive with their spikes on their body. Let's have a look at another another animal. So. So another reptile. <laughs> oh, Rich, you're more than welcome, lovely. Be available on replay anywhere. So another reptile. So it's a cold-blooded animal. So reptile, it's got scales. Now, think about the habitat where this animal would live. Now, if we're talking, I won't 
go on about this species but if we're talking um about animals about snakes that have evolved a snake that has evolved to round about 26 foot can you imagine that 26 foot you're not gonna you're not gonna you know it's gonna be some fight you're gonna have to put up ah yeah for a 26 foot snake so zeus is an american corn snake so he comes from america he doesn't eat corn but what he does eat he's an obligate carnivore so he can't eat his vegetables his body would not process vegetables um he is solely a meat eater so our bodies are made for eating meat and vegetables morning michelle i hope you're okay lovely um, yeah, our bodies are made for eating vegetables and meat. Snakes are obligate carnivores, certainly aren't made for eating vegetables. Now, we can see Zeus, he's got, I don't know if you can see, he's sticking his tongue out. He's not being cheeky. What he's actually doing is he's smelling. Now, generally, what he's smelling for is the warmest part of my body. So, although it's quite warm in here anyway, it's... I'll just tell you, tell you my temperatures, see what we're at. We're at 33 degrees. So it is, that's going to fall now. So it is very warm in here. Yep, yeah, fantastic, Aaron. So it is very warm in here. But um, Zeus is placed uh, a bit further away, so it wouldn't be as warm over there. So it is, he needs to be kept at round about 21. Now, with regards to Zeus, the food he would eat is, is small rodents. Now, in the cornfields in, in America, uh, Zeus would literally scale the cornfield. So he would slither around searching for food. But, but... He would, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he would be, he wouldn't. Ah, oh, thank you, Oliver. Oliver said he'd really like to meet me and my animals. Stay tuned. Well, Oliver, I'll tell you more about that in a couple of weeks. I've got a few ideas up my sleeve. So, Zeus wouldn't eat the corn from the fields, but what he would do is he would eat the animals that eat the corn. So actually, we need to say thank you to Zeus, because I don't know about anyone else, but I love sweet corn. I love a good corn on cob, especially when it gets stuck between your teeth. But being, being a snake, he is, he is a constrictor. So he constricts his prey. So like I said, he is an obligate carnivore. He's got to eat the meat. So... When he's scaling the field, he's looking round. Aaron, I think I remember you telling me this. I do think I remember you saying that your dad had snakes, lovely. I think they're ace. Well, I think Zeus is ace. Um, I've never been a great snake fan, to be totally honest. But then when Zeus came along, he came along as a rescue. He was very poor, lad. So, Yeah. I don't mind it means okay we've actually got two snakes one one we don't we don't take to out to public but I'll, sh I'll show him one day so where was I habitat snake so in the cornfields of America you can see how he would camouflage because he basically does look like a bit of a corn on the cob he's got lovely color in the golden color so that would actually help him camouflage in the in the corn but also he does have eyes now although he can't see very well with his eyes he can sense where it's warm now when I say can sense where it's warm he can sense with his tongue now his tongue is a pretty amazing a pretty amazing what it's a pretty amazing tool to have for a snake because as he sticks his tongue out you ever seen a snake's tongue you will notice he's actually got a fork in his tongue i don't mean a fork that you eat with but he's he's got a tongue in the shape of a y 
yeah um and what happens is he'll stick his tongue out and if he can if he can feel the heat more on the right hand side and he's, he's after heat he'll go right but if he sticks his tongue out and he's wanting food and it's on the left hand side he'll be able to sense that with his tongue so very very good predator and once he gets quite warm he can move he can move really really quickly he can move really really quickly quite amazingly quick actually so in general if you've ever ever come across me and the animals you'll never see me get uh the snake out before a mammal because he'll use his tongue he can sense so it's really important obviously when you keep animals you know about the predator prey and obviously a mammal would be a, a, a a prey animal to a snake so it's really important to make sure we're not putting any animal in in any sort of um position where they have to be scared or worry about being attacked so zeus is a predator fantastic predator as well so zeus would live in a habitat so if we're thinking of our mythical creature we're thinking we're thinking, do we have a tongue? Do we have a tongue for sensing? Do we have eyes? Are we, are we wanting eyes? Camouflage. For your habitat, think about, do they need eyes? Do they need, uh, do they need to camouflage? What sort of predators will they be up against? What sort of food are they going to eat? Okay, so have a think about all these things when we're creating our creature. So, stay there. Don't go anywhere. Let's have a look at another, another animal. So, we're now looking at an animal. Stay there. So, we're thinking about our creature and how we would design our creature. So, what about this? This is a tired Freddy the ferret. Now, being a ferret is a mammal. He's got hair. He's very tired. He's saying, come on, mum, what time are we on? Again, he is an obligate carnivore. So he eats, he eats meat. He can't process. Uh, morning, Linz. Morning, Lisa. He can't process vegetables. Don't need to eat his broccoli, which is a godsend to some. Look at those. Do you see those teeth? Oh, if we woke you up, sunshine. Do apologise. Do apologise. Because he's, I think he's needing a wee. Don't wee on me. Sorry, I have just woke you up. He's so cute. Right, so let's think about being being a carnivore, being a mammal. If we choose to be a mammal in our in our habitat where we would like to survive. Now, I'll just show you. Freddie has a very good coat. Now he would not do very well in an environment where it's too hot simply because of his coat. <laughs> now, with his coat, can you see? He's molten. Animals or mammals that live in different temperate, temperate, temper, temperate habitats generally would have a coat that molts so when it's when it's cold they have a nice thick coat and when it's warm that coat will molt that coat will molt literally and make everyone sneeze and you know get itchy eyes and all that if you've got an allergy to now remember if you're thinking about living in a hot if your mythical creature is a hot living in a hot habitat do you want it to have a coat oh gosh sorry freddie did i wake you up and like totally disturb you 
sorry. He's so cute. No, he's not Lynn's. Everyone always says, oh, God, they stink. But they're not as smelly as you think. More cuddly than smelly. So, guys, I want you to think about all these things when you are coming up with your mythical creature. And again, don't forget to fill, fill your worksheet out. Let me know what you've come up with on your tropical island and in the sea. Okay? So... Seen quite quite a bit. No, Aaron, not today. Uh, sorry, Oliver, not today, love. Eh? We'll see what we'll come up with tomorrow. So, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all for the big quiz tomorrow. Don't forget to send me pictures of your mythical creatures. See how we can see what we come up with. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks, Aaron. See you later. TTFN.